I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, it's Saturday. Hit you with a quote here. Uh, Mark Twain once said that there is no sadder sight than a young pessimist. And I could not agree more. Yet we're living in a time here, 2022, for the last three or four years here that you know, pessimism has been at an all-time high, especially for young people. How many times have I talked about it on my blog? How many times have I addressed the comment section in my blog here uh, from people saying, you know, oh, and it's way, it was way easier when you started out. My kids have no chance now in life. They will never buy a house in the lower mainland, let alone Vancouver. Uh, everything has conspired against them now. Times have changed. And of course, I've pushed back on all of that. I still stick to my uh, opinion all along that, you know, we're living in a golden age right now for, for everybody, especially young people with technology and the ways to leverage your time with technology, the various side hustles you can put together, uh, and, and side businesses again, using technology to produce passive income. You know, if you're, if you, if you're either in the new economy or you're in the old economy, if you're in the old economy, you know, getting a job, going to university, getting a job and making 50000 or $60,000 a year in middle management. Well, yeah, you're not going to be, you're not going to be cutting it in the lower mainland. But, you know, life evolves, things change. We've got a new economy now where you can go to school or you can learn to code at, at, a, at a, uh, a place like BCIT or Kwantlen College and, you know, get a $60,000, $70,000 job coding and within three or four years easily be into the six figure uh, amount. We've got young engineers coming out of university. They're starting at 125,000 a year. Companies like Amazon, Shopify, uh, Microsoft, all these companies are setting up shop here. Google, uh, there are a lot of high paying tech sector jobs out there. But of course, then there's the other people that have not kind of adjusted to the times that have been falling further and further behind and they become incredibly pessimistic. Look no further than say, for instance, that blog I did on that YouTube blog is Vancouver, the best North American city and thousands and thousands of comments, many of them negative, many of them pessimistic, young people, many of them that when I read them, it is like Mark Twain says, it's sad because they're young people that have given up in a lot of cases. Jeez, their parents have given up. Can you imagine their parents telling them that it's a lot tougher now and you know, you're gonna, never going to buy a house? Why would you ever tell your kids something like that? There are opportunities all over the place if you've got the right mindset. And that's what it's all about. That's why in the first two chapters of my book, I talk about the successful mindset versus the, I don't know, let's just call it the cork on the ocean that bobs around and lets all these external factors get to them. And rather than putting together a game plan and doing the mirror test, they just kind of go through life meandering around and then they wonder why they didn't get a lot of success. You know, <laughs> there's opportunities everywhere, but success is not going to come to you. It never has and never will. It never came to me 35 years when I started on my real estate journey. And I can tell you, I know people think it was a lot easier when I started buying real estate 30 plus years ago. It wasn't. I was paying 17% interest rates. Very difficult to qualify for a mortgage back then as well. I wasn't earning anywhere near the money I earn now. It was a grind. It was a grind to get that first $15,000, $20,000 after tax to get by my first condo, get approved for the mortgage without any help from mom and dad, like a lot of my clients are doing now. It's never gotten any easier. As a matter of fact, again, I still stick to my gun saying there are far more opportunities now than there were 10 years ago, but way more than there were 20 or 25 years ago, leveraging technology now. But success isn't going to come to you. Stop waiting for it. You know, these pessimists that are on these real estate blogs, go on to the Vancouver Sun and you'll see them there too. Any article about Vancouver real estate being overpriced, there's going to be 50 comments there from young people that feel that all is lost. Don't be like that, but you're going to have to work for success. If you want to live in a city as great as Vancouver here, it's not for the average, as I've said many times before, you're going to have to rise above the masses here. You're really going to have to, to, to work at this. You're going to have to grind at this. It's not easy to get it, but 
as Austin said here, it's the down payment and getting qualified. You know, once you've got that, if you want to buy a, you can still buy a good one bedroom on SkyTrain in New Westminster for under 400, 350. You can buy a decent little one bedroom condo in, in the Brig House area, central Richmond for 375. You'd probably get in with 10% down. So let's just call it 35, $40,000. Once you're in and you've got that 40K, it's smooth sailing after that, but you're gonna have to commit and have to make some sacrifices to get that 35 or 40K down. It's not gonna be easy. It's a lot easier though if you can get into a career that's paying you 80, 90, $100,000. But I've got young clients that are doing it on far less than that. It just takes a little bit more dedication if you're, if you're earning $60,000 to save for that down payment. But once you're in, you're in. Now you're riding the market up your holding costs aren't much more than what you're paying for rent, and you're creating equity two ways. You're paying down the mortgage at incredibly low interest rates, doing huge damage to that principal. And then over time, not every year, but over time, you will get some appreciation on that home. You might have a couple of down years, you might have a few years where it goes flat, but guaranteed you buy that home today and in 10 years from now, you'll have some nice equity in there. Far more than you'd get from renting because that's gonna produce zero in equity. Share a little, as you guys know, I get a lot of newsletters. I subscribe to a, a number of different newsletters here. I've got a, I'm fortunate enough, I've got a couple of guys in, in, that are money managers in New York, private equity, that I'll get their quarterly reports. So let me share a good one with you. This is a guy I've known for a long time. Um, you know, he's a, he's a value investor, uh, buy and hold strategies. He holds, you know, the companies like, that I like, the Apples, the Canadian banks, the Amazons. Uh, Nvidia, you know, Costco, Home Depot, Johnson and Johnson, you know, all, all the good investable big blue chip companies. They all pay a dividend, or at least most of them do, and they're all continuing to increase those dividends. Um, this is from his his quarterly newsletter here. He talked about, uh, and it talks about the media here, which I've hit you guys with many times before too. Good news is uninteresting. Nobody cares about good news. Good news is can totally boring. Nobody wants to hear that. I think the stock market's going to stay strong. And I think that if you bought Apple shares today, over the next 10 years, you'll do quite well on them. Why would the media want to pick up on anything like that? Uh, good news is uninteresting. Bad news, on the other hand, is eye-catching. And uh, for the past 18 months, doomday doomsdayers have been calling into question the steady advance of stocks. Uh, the hallmark of a durable ad, uh, advance in skept is skeptics. The skeptics uh, will be right eventually uh, because he talks about that broken clock theory. Even a stock clock is right two times a day. Uh, that is the certainty of a clock, but it's a bad way to invest, much, much less tell time. What gloomy headlines get wrong is it's about your investing time frame, not their deadline for the, today's news. Headlines know nothing of your time frame, your objectives, uh, the skill with which you choose to handle your savings, and yet the biggest news organizations in the world continue to broadcast stormy music. Uh, that is in their best in, uh, business model, breaking news, and advise for your attention. Yeah, I mean, this is what I've been saying for many, many years on my blog here, and this is probably the biggest thing that trips most people up. They watch CNN, the constantly negative network, which, by the way, is in complete shambles now. I don't know if you guys have seen, the viewership on CNN now has just plummeted, plummeted. The, the stock of AT&T, the parrot company, is at all-time lows. People are getting smart now. They start to realize that, you know, the CNN is not giving you news anymore. It's opinion, and it's almost all negative. All their breaking news stuff, COVID deaths, Omicron virus, interest rates, inflation, they just keep you in that cocoon of fear. And most people live in fear. You've got to stop living in fear, and you've got to start attacking life being proactive, taking control of your own destiny. That's what life, that's what winners do. Losers will focus on all this negative, gloomy stuff. It's not their fault. You see, honey, that's why we haven't been able to buy a house because it's the economy or it's the money launderers or it's the foreign buyers. There's always a new flavor of the month that uh, will substantiate why you haven't had a whole lot of success in your life, either as a saving for retirement or buying your principal residence. 
You've got to get away from all that stuff. Tune all of it out. It's just noise. It's just static. You know, read some books. Start following people that are optimistic, positive, and successful. Because from what I see, all the people that are complaining and pessimists, the doom and gloomers, these uh, gloomy headlines, these people that write this stuff, if you look a little deeper, which you can't, but for the most part, they're on the outside looking in. They have not had a whole lot of success in their life. They don't. I don't know any successful people, either here or Los Angeles or my friends in New York. These are very, I know some very successful people. They're all optimists. All of them. None of them watch CNN. None of them watch CBC. They read books. They stay focused on their game plan, buying quality companies, reinvesting the dividends, saving for the down payment on, on real estate, buying properties, either living them or putting in tenants in them and hanging on to them. They know that getting in and out of these assets is not a smart way to go because it's expensive to get in and out, especially on real estate. So instead, buy really good companies that you don't have to keep an eye on, that you can hold on to. Like he says, what the gloomy headlines get wrong uh, isn't, it's about your investing time frame, not their deadline for today's news. Their deadline for the gloomy news is going to come and go. A lot of it doesn't even come to fruition what they predict. And even if it does, it's, you know, all the negative stuff you were talking about two or three years ago is forgotten now. It just moves on to another flavor of the month. So, Stop waiting for success because it'll never come to you. You know, being a pessimist and giving up on life, I feel sorry for so many of these people when I read their, their comments in, in some of the, in my channel and in some of these other media outlets. It sounds like to me they've given up. And that's terrible. Why would you? Life is going to throw you some curveballs and nothing worth doing in life, I've found, is, is ever going to be easy. If it was, everyone would be doing it. If it was easy to buy a house, everyone would be doing it. If it was easy to save two, three million dollars in your retirement portfolio, everyone would be doing it. Very few people do. Rise above these people. Follow positive people. Read books. Stay optimistic and tune out these negative naysayers, doomsdayers, pessimists that have given up on life. So many of them, you know, they just continue to see these guys calling for higher interest rates. Please, would you raise interest rates? What kind of a guy wants to raise interest rates? I'm enjoying this low interest rate environment because I've got a lot of assets. I own a lot of real estate. I've got a lot of equities. Of course, higher interest rates will put a cold bucket of water on real estate and will also put a cold bucket of water on stocks because if bond yields go up, they become somewhat attractive. Uh, people will sell stock and go into fixed income. Although that's a whole other story here. I've never owned a bond and I'm cons and I'm definitely probably never will in my life. Even if bond yields got up to four or 5%, which were nowhere near, <laughs> which probably is not going to happen in, in my lifetime, they still would not be a good alternative to stocks. Not even close. You know, the easiest way to boost your returns is to increase your holding period. You know, this is all really simple stuff. Buy, hold, it's what I've been telling you guys for 10 years on my blog here. Keep it simple. There's nothing more to it than that. Anybody else that tries to tell you about timing markets and telling you about micro and macro economic forecasts and inflation numbers, I don't know. I pay very little attention to that myself. Maybe dedicate three or four minutes in the morning when I read my couple of morning newsletters, but I don't let any of it you know, influence any of my decisions on what I'm doing. I'm still selling lots of homes, you know, working for my clients, getting them good prices on the sales, getting them the best price I can on the buy side. Every week I put a little more money to work in the stock market. I continue to save a little money in a side fund to buy another investment unit. Those are the things that I focus on. All the rest of the stuff, I could care less. And that's how successful people think. They have multiple income streams. They put their blinders on. They only work on the things they have control over and spend very little time on things that they have no control over. And that's interest rates and inflation and all that other stuff. I'm Owen Big Len. 
As always, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I'll see you next week.